Hi everyone, it's Sylvia here. If you don't know me, I just had the vertical sleeve gastrectomy procedure done on January 29th, 2024. Today is February 12th, 2024, and that makes me exactly two weeks post-op. Um, let me tell you about my journey. I'm going to try my best not to edit this video because I just I don't want to go through the editing process. Um, but let me just see. I just want to tell you guys everything that's happened so far. So um, let me talk about the day of surgery. The day of surgery, I had mine at... I was supposed to arrive to the hospital at 6.55 and my surgery was scheduled for 8.55. I got to the hospital, checked in. They took me back. I had to do a urine test for a pregnancy test. Um, and then they had me brush my teeth with this nasty stuff um, just to keep my mouth like really, really clean and sterile. I had already brushed my teeth prior to, but they still had me brush my teeth and do like a mouthwash and rinse and all that. And then they had me wipe down my body completely with um, these certain wipes. And then let me see what else, what else. Um, and then I changed into my surgical gown and um, they had like this nice like little heater hose attached to it. So it, um, like I just was really warm underneath the all the blankets and the surgery gown. Um, and I was pretty nervous, I'm not gonna lie. I was just like, I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe I'm doing this. But um, there was like, everything was happening so fast that I didn't really have time to freak out or to even cry just cause it was like boom, 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 super fast. Um, next thing I know um, my surgeon comes in I gave him um, my boyfriend's contact information so he could call my boyfriend and let him know if you don't know my boyfriend and I are long distance um, so he couldn't make it to be here for my surgery but that's okay um, and so I just had my surgeon give him a call afterwards and then um, I met with the anesthesiologist he came in asked me a few questions um, like if I had any anything going on in my mouth like any like broken teeth or any loose teeth or anything like that thankfully no I did let him know I have a few crowns um, on one side of my mouth um, and then the anesthesiologist nurse came in and she put in my IV and she um, was like I'm gonna um, give you this like cocktail so just to take the edge off and then she started wheeling me away and um, I was getting kind of nervous, but then um, I got into the OR, I, I like, how do I explain it? I scooted myself onto the surgical table, um, and then before I knew it, that that's the last thing that I remember, and then I woke up, and the surgery was already done, um, so I got wheeled back at like around 9.15ish in the morning. And then when I woke up, it was 11.30, so I'm not exactly too sure how long the procedure was. That's just the time that I remember waking up, but it was it was pretty fast. I mean, from 9.15 to 11.30, that's two hours and 15 minutes, but I don't know how long I was sleeping for. Um, and then I got wheeled away to my room, and um, I did have the choice whether or not to spend the night or I could go home the same day, but I've never had surgery. I didn't know what to expect and just to be on the safe side because I'm, I am more on the anxious side, especially when it comes to my health, um, I was like, I'm gonna stay. So they took me to my room and then at about 1.30, I felt the need to um, use the bathroom because of all like the IV fluids I was being given. And um, so I went to the bathroom and then since I was already up, I knew that the first thing was to start walking. And so I started walking. I did about three laps around like the area that I was in. It wasn't like a whole big area. It was like a small area that I did three laps around. Um, I did feel some pain and some discomfort. Um, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be because like there's other people other like cause I, hold on. I have seen so many YouTube videos, so many TikTok videos, and one thing that people always complain about is the gas pain. And um, I mean, I was definitely a little bit uncomfortable, but it wasn't anything as bad as I thought it was going to be. And I'm not somebody that has a very high pain tolerance. Like, I am a crybaby. I have very low pain tolerance. So the fact that I didn't feel like I was in that much pain, I think that says a lot. Um, but again, everybody's different. And so I did take pain 
pain medication like as soon as I woke up I was like pain medication pain medication pain medication I was like it was like around like a seven so it was still painful but it wasn't like excruciating like had me in tears or anything like that or like had me screaming or anything like that um so I I'm not the one to tough things out if there's pain medication give it to me because I'm not gonna tough it out I that, that is not me um and so I was given pain medication throughout the day which made me pretty drowsy and I had no problem with that. I'm like, I know I need to get up and walk around and stuff but at the same time I need to be as, as comfortable as possible. Um, I want to say that the gas pain, I at one point the day of surgery, like around 4 or 5 p.m., I did start feeling it in like my shoulder blades like my back like shoulder blades um and I was like okay I need to get up and I, I had asked for pain medication but it was a little too early I still had to wait I had to wait like another two hours so what I decided was to get up and walk again because I know that that relieves it and I was able to get a few burps out a few farts out as well TMI I know um and yeah I had a few people come visit me my best friend Haley came to visit me and with her when she came by it was like around 7 p.m. we walked around the hospital um, a few laps and then um, I fell back asleep and then I was I was doing pretty good taking in my fluids and then finally you know I was like okay I think I want to give a protein shake a try and so I had a protein shake it was about four ounces I, I took my time with it um, and then that night I feel like I couldn't really sleep that night because I had slept for most of the day and so um, I was like up walking like around five in the morning and stuff like that um, but I want to say the day of surgery I was surprised at how well I did and then the next day I was discharged um, and again I was doing like really well pain wise but also it was because they were giving me around the clock care giving me my medications every four hours every six hours um, when I left the hospital that's when I started noticing some discomfort and I was I was a little worried um, I started feeling like something like in my like sternum area like right here and it just felt like something was going up and then it would go down and then it would just release like the pain would be gone and it would disappear and um, I wasn't sure what that was but I did have medication for something called esophageal spasms I'm not even sure if I said that right so forgive me I'm sorry I, I don't know um, but I kept feeling that throughout the day and it was like making me pretty miserable I'm like Cause like it would be quick, like it would it would last maybe like thirty seconds of that discomfort of going up, going down. And it never like reached up all the way over here, but it was it was just like down here in like my chest area. So it would go up, it'd go down, and then it would disappear. Um, so I believe that that was esophageal spasms, and it had me pretty uncomfortable. Um, that night that I came home, so one day post up when I had come home, that night, um. I remember I was just sitting in blank, like sitting in my bed, and then all of a sudden my mouth just started filling up with saliva, which is a, a sign that you're about to throw up. And so I go to my toilet, I spit out the saliva, and I'm just like waiting, waiting to throw up, because I'm like, okay, here it comes. But thankfully I didn't throw up. And then um, the next morning, so day two post up, I was brushing my teeth because the protein breath was just awful. Um, just drinking protein shakes and protein shakes and water and then protein shakes. It was just, oh, so gross. So be prepared for that. Um, I was brushing my teeth and then I kind of, I had to brush my tongue as well. You should get a tongue scraper. I should have invested in one and I probably will pretty soon. But all I had was my toothbrush. So I was brushing my tongue and it kind of made me gag a little bit. And then that triggered a lot of sal saliva forming in my mouth again. And I thought I was going to throw up. And then um, I think it happened again. But thankfully I didn't throw up. And then the same thing, the saliva filling up, it happened again later on that night. And then I was still kind of dealing with the esophageal spasms. But thankfully I realized, you know, I have medication for it. So I started taking anti-nausea medication and the esophageal spasms medication. Um, I was given... Um, Valium for for like physical pain, but I didn't really use it. Um, I felt like what was more effective, especially with what I was experiencing, was the nausea and the esophageal spasms. So I took medication for both of those things, and that kept me pretty comfortable. And then about day five post op, that's when I stopped getting like the spasms and stuff like that, and the nausea had gone away completely too. So thankfully, I didn't have to be on those medications for very long. I want to say day five post op. I 
finally had reached like a little bit of a breaking point because my body was just so exhausted. I was so tired. Like I'm st I still, even at two weeks, I still feel tired and a little bit weak, but I just felt so weak day five and day six post-op. And I just remember crying because I'm like, I'm getting tired just sitting up in a chair. Sitting up, I just want to be in bed all day. I remember, especially day five, I just felt like I want to go to sleep all day just so I can get through the day. So then that day, I was like, I need to get out. I need to get out of the house. And so I went and I got my toes done. I got my nails done. Little Valentine's Day nails. Give it a moment. Yes, so cute. Um, and that definitely made me feel better. Um, but then day six post-op, I took my time with drinking my first protein shake of the day. And that just left my body really, 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 really hungry to the point where I started sweating. I started feeling shaky. I just didn't feel good. And I remember that day, I really wanted to go to the mall. I wanted to do, like, just get out of the house. But the way that I was feeling, there was just absolutely no way it would have been safe for me to do that and spend that much, like, energy. There was no way for me to spend that much energy the way that I was feeling day six post-op. So what I did was I just spent all day in bed. I mean, obviously just to get up to use the bathroom if I needed to, but I just drink my protein shakes and I drink my waters. And that's another thing I want to bring up. I have had no issue meeting my protein goals or my water goals. Maybe the first few days I did struggle a little bit because I was a little scared. I didn't know what to expect, but my stomach does pretty well. I mean, obviously I don't chug the water, but um, I can I can drink my protein shake within an hour. Um, and then same thing with like a water bottle an hour. I think maybe now I've got it cut down to like 30 minutes that I can do it, that I can finish a whole protein shake. Um, but anyway, yeah, day six, I spent the whole day in bed just conserving as much energy as possible. Um, day seven, I, as soon as I woke up, I started drinking my protein shake and I finished it, you know, quickly and I felt great. And then I kind of kept doing that same alternating between protein shake and water, protein shake and water. Um, and I started feeling a lot, lot better. Um, and then honestly, day seven through like day 10 is kind of a blur. It was just normal normal things. Um, I've been able to have a bowel movement. I know this is kind of TMI, but I've been able to have a bowel movement maybe like, maybe like once every other day. Um, and I do take like Miralax or um, Dulco, Dulcolax or Dulcoli. I can't remember exactly what it's called. Um, but only, I only take it on the days where I feel like I, it's, it's kind of been a long time since I had a bowel movement. Um, day 10, I experimented and I tried a piece of cheese and it got really, really, really mushy in my mouth and I swallowed it. And I was like, okay, nothing bad happened. And then, um, day 11, I had a Galentine's Day. No, no, no. Was it? No, it was day 12. Day 12, I had a Galentine's Day event to go to and they had buffalo chicken dip and cheese and crackers. And I just went ahead and I, and I helped myself to some and I got full. Like, I, I think I, I definitely had more than one or two bites. Like, I feel like my stomach can hold a little bit more than what I've seen other people say they can take in. Um, but I think I stopped maybe at, at like four bites. After that, I'm, I'm done. Um, and then yesterday, I completely, you know, ended my liquid diet and I was on pureed and um, I still had a protein shake in the morning and then um, I had an egg that was like boiled in water. Um, I, I boiled the water, broke the egg in there and had it that way just to make it as like moist as possible. Um, and then I grabbed a, a little bit of cream cheese, maybe like two or three tablespoons of cream cheese. And then I added some reduced fat Colby Jack cheese, popped that in the microwave, melted it, stirred it all up, added the egg and it was still yolky in the middle. And so then I poked it and all the yolk came out and I mixed all of that together. And then I added some taco sauce on top and it was so good. Um, I definitely could have had maybe like the last bite or the last two bites I probably shouldn't have eaten because after I ate the whole, it was like a whole little tiny bowl. But after I finished it, I felt stuffed. Um, and then later on that day, I, um, I took a nap and then I woke up and I was feeling hungry. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do the next thing that I was excited about is making a buffalo chicken dip. So I made my own buffalo chicken dip. If you want, you can see it on my TikTok. Um, honestly, on TikTok is where I have a lot of my updates. Um, 
So you'll find more updates on TikTok, and it's just my name, Sylvia Dela Cruz. You can find me on TikTok. Please follow me. I would appreciate it. Um, so I made a buffalo chicken dip, and it was pretty good. And I had I measured it to two ounces of buffalo chicken dip, and then I had four Ritz crackers. I honestly probably should have done just three Ritz crackers, um, and I think I would have been fine. But after the four Ritz crackers and the two ounces of buffalo dip, I was stuffed again, and I didn't really like that feeling. I didn't throw up, or I didn't, I didn't get sick or anything, but I definitely felt a little uncomfortable, and I was like, okay. I kind of overdid it but you know thankfully I was fine um today is you know officially two weeks I still haven't eaten anything I had a protein shake and I'm working on my water um but yeah so far I feel like honestly this experience has been honest it's been the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life so definitely when people say that this is the easy way out it's definitely not the easy way out um it's it's difficult it's challenging um Last week, I was obsessively watching foods, like food videos. I was watching people make food, people eat food, people rate food, like obsessively. It was, it was kind of crazy of me. I, I felt a little bit embarrassed about this guilty pleasure that I had of watching all these food videos but you know it gave me inspiration and it gave me something to look forward to um but yeah I was definitely more than ready to be done with the liquid stage and I'm glad that I'm now in the pureed stage I feel a little bit more normal but yeah I can definitely see the restriction I know this is going to sound kind of dumb but I really thought for a sec that the surgery didn't work just because I was able to you know meet my protein goals with no problem meet my water goals for no problem and that just goes to show that every single person is different and thankfully, I'm so grateful that I didn't have any issues, you know, meeting my protein and, and water goals. So I'm grateful for that. I'm thankful for that. Thankful for my body. And that's another thing. I just have a whole new appreciation for my body. I feel like definitely, you know, before surgery, I didn't have a lot of love for my physical body. And then after the surgery, I just feel like, wow, my body has done so much for me. It's taken care of me so well. And even after removing 80% of my stomach, it still continues to take care of us. And so I'm just really, really grateful for that. Really scared that I wasn't going to be able to meet my protein goals or meet my liquid goals or that I wasn't going to be able to, I was going to have issues with like dairy. So far, no issues with dairy. I'm super thankful for that. My dietitian did recommend that I should stay off of eggs until I get to the soft food stage but I just wanted to test it out and I did okay so um I'm okay with eggs uh, I started the weight loss program at 272 pounds but I was wearing like a sweater and my shoes so really I was probably more like around 270 um and then I didn't lose that much weight pre-op I only had to do a two-day liquid diet pre-op um I weighed in at surgery day at 266 um, I decided that I'm not going to weigh myself s until the one month mark. So till February 29th, I'll give you guys an update about how much weight I've lost. But I did get a little curious and I did take my measurements before the day of surgery. And um, I lost two inches around my hips and then two inches around my bust area, like underneath my boobs. Um, so that's exciting. I definitely can see a little bit of a difference in my face. I feel it in my fingers because I crack my fingers all the time. Um, I'm... I st this is my Apple Watch, and it's the small one. I still have it at the very, very end, but now I feel like I don't have to, like, struggle to put it on. I can put it on a little bit easier now. So, I don't know. I would imagine that maybe I've lost, like, 10 or... F I want to say maybe, like, 15 pounds, I want to say, but I don't know, because I haven't weighed myself. I don't want... I just... Me, personally, in the past, I've used to weigh myself every single day, and keep track of it and it would ruin it would make or break my day uh, depending on what the scale said and so that's why I took my measurements um, and that's why I decided I'm only gonna do it once a month because just because if the scale doesn't go down say like two months post up but the inches go down on my body I'm gonna have to be you know happy about that I want to be able to see the difference in that and also taking pictures and stuff like that I need to be better about taking pictures because I haven't taken that many pictures um but yeah I kind of want to do like a one week two week three week four week five week I think that'd be cool um but honestly you guys I just feel really grateful 
I feel really grateful that I got to do this. I, I still can't believe that I did it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just very grateful. I hope, hopefully this video helps. Um, and if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment below and I'll try to answer it in the next video. Otherwise, you can follow me on my TikTok, which is uh, Sylvia Dela Cruz. And, or you could follow me on Instagram, or you could do both. My Instagram is self -lovin Sylvia, um, and I'll leave that in the, uh, the caption below so you can have a reference for that. But yeah, if you could do me a favor and either subscribe here or follow me on TikTok or follow me on Instagram or do all three, that would be amazing. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, again, just leave it in the comments below and I'd be more than happy to answer them. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting me. I love you.